the next thing we're doing is learning about the number e. So this is a continuation of exponential functions. You know how we have this number pi that represents the diameter of a circle divided, no, we, it's the circumference of a circle divided by the diameter, sorry about that. And of course it's approximately equal to 3.141596, you don't need to write this part down. And um, computers apparently have calculated this to millions and millions of decimal places, but have, so far it doesn't repeat, doesn't stop. It's an um, irrational number, sometimes called a transcendental number. Okay, we've worked with that before, or we will the next term quite a bit in trig. Okay, but here's the important one for this unit, and it's the called E, the number E. You might see it on your calculator, especially if you see buttons like one that has an LN. There might be if you a little E above that, because it has to do with that, and we'll talk more about that later. Anyway, all right, for now let's just talk about what E is. You know how I defined this one as a circumference divided by diameter. I'm not actually going to define E right now. We will define E later in this chapter, but not today. E is just a transcendental number that is approximately equal, and the reason I say approximately is because it's irrational, it goes forever, 2.718287, blah, blah, blah. Um, look for that on your calculator right now, see if you can find it because you're going to need it. Okay. Now let's do some examples of how to solve some exponential functions. When you solve an exponential function, that means you're trying to solve for what x is. Um, actually, equations. Functions are the things that we graph. Equations are the things that we solve. Okay, solving exponential equations. So the first step to solving an exponential equation is that you want to make sure your problem has the same base on each side. Let's go ahead and give you an example that we're going to solve. So let's solve 3 to the x plus 1 power equals 81. Okay, so we're trying to solve for the x, which happens to be in the exponent. That's a little bit weird to solve for. If if it was an x here with a power of 2, then we would square root. But when the power is the x, we don't know what the root is. So we have to approach this completely differently. Our first step would be to get the same base on both sides of the problem. Same, step one, same base on both sides. Okay. When I say base, that means I have this number 3 and I have this number 81, and I want to change it so that I have the same number on both sides to a power. Well, obviously 3 is a prime number, so we can't go smaller than 3. But the number 81 is actually a power of 3. We can rewrite the number 81 as 3 to a power. So we can rewrite our problem as 3 to the x plus 1, that stays the same, equals 3 to what power is 81? Well, 3 times 3 is 9 times 3 is 27 times 3 is 81. So I believe it's 3 to the 4th power. Does that sound correct? Now, as long as our bases are the same, we can set the exponents equal to each other and solve. So if bases are equal, set exponents equal and solve. All right, so we're going to take this exponent and this exponent, set them equal to each other. x plus 1 equals 4. Therefore, x would equal 3. I subtract the 1 from both sides. There's my answer. Let's check our work. If we plug our x back in, back in 3 plus 1 is 4, and 3 to the 4th power is 81. It does work. We found the value of x. Let's do another one. This one's a little bit weird, and it's involving e. We're not actually going to use the value 2.5. 7, 1 at this point. I just wanted you to understand that E is a number and you just work with it like it's a number, just like any other number. But we just leave it as an E when we're not trying to calculate something because then uh, we're not dealing with all those decimals. Okay. Again, we want to follow our same steps where we're going to get the same base on both sides. It looks like E will probably be our base. But right now this is a little bit clunky. We need to simplify this. First, let's use a property to combine those exponents together, so that would be e to the 2x. Um, when you have a power to a power, you just multiply the powers together. 
Now this, we don't like, I don't like having a base on the top of a fraction and the base on the bottom of a fraction, so I'm going to change this so it's up top. So to do that, I can just simply change my exponent to a negative. Now when you have the same bases and they're multiplying like this, that means you add the exponents. So I can simplify this side of my problem to be 2x minus 3. So e to the 2x minus 3 is the same as e to the 2x times e to the negative 3, which is the same as what we started with. So this is a simplified version of this. Now of course on this side we had e to the negative x squared. So now we have the same base on each side, we can simply set our exponents equal to each other. So we have negative x squared equals 2x minus 3. We can now add this to the other side so that we have a positive x squared plus 2x minus 3. Of course that gave us 0 over here, so now we have a quadratic we're solving. I hope you remember how to solve quadratics. So we're going to solve our quadratic by factoring or by quadratic formula. Uh, let's see if this one will factor x plus 3 and x minus 1, I believe, does the trick, right? Because 3 times negative 1 is negative 3, and 3 plus a negative 1 is a positive 2. So that gives me answers negative 3 and positive 1. And there I've solved it.